Hey what's going on guys, it's Nick here, back again with another video. Today's video is the history documentary video on the STM, or the Montreal Metro. I wasn't planning on making this video, but I ended up making it for one of the classes that I was taking while studying up in Montreal, and I figured I might as well publish it to YouTube too. So yeah, that's pretty much what this is going to be. This video will be diving into the history of the STM as well as the rolling stock, and yeah. So now without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. To start off, I just want to give some general information about the Montreal Metro system. The Montreal Metro, or the STM, dates all the way back to the 1960s. The original line opened on October 14, 1966, and was the second rapid transit subway system in all of Canada. The first rapid transit system to open was the Toronto Transit Commission, or the TTC, which opened in the 1950s. Something interesting about the STM is that it is one of the only subway systems in all of North America to run on rubber tires, rather than steel wheels and rails. And the STM's inspiration to use rubber wheels instead of the traditional infrastructure came from the Paris Metro. And now that we've gotten the general overview, let's go ahead and get started with the early days of the STM. Now the Montreal Metro had opened in the 1960s like I had just stated, however plans for it go back as far as the early 1900s. The city of Montreal back in the early 1900s wanted to build a subway system to accommodate for the influx of people coming into the city. Alongside that, traffic was becoming a bit of a concern within Montreal. And the subway system received multiple different proposals, although unfortunately none of them came to fruition. But by the 1930s, there was a decent plan for a subway system that was pitched to the city. And it actually got approved. However, construction never started due to the Great Depression. Once the Great Depression had ended, the city and investors began working again to get the subway system built. However, the project would be put on hold again due to World War II. Once the Second World War had concluded, there wouldn't be much talk about a metro system until around the early 1960s. In 1960, Jean Drapeau became mayor after three years of being out of office. Jean was very keen on the idea of building a subway system and he ultimately made the subway system concept into a reality. In November of 1960, Jean visited Paris and observed the Paris metro system. At the time, the Paris metro system had switched from conventional steel rails and wheels to rubber wheels and concrete tracks. Jean observed the Paris metro system and envisioned in his mind a similar metro system like Paris's but running underground in Montreal. He saw the metro system as being a potential symbol of innovation for the city of Montreal, and it fit his vision to establish Montreal as a modern, world-class city. In 1961, the Quebec provincial government gave the city of Montreal the power to build the underground subway, and with this power, the city acted upon this immediately and began to build the metro system. The original blueprint that was presented on October 20th, 1961, called for three lines, the green, the orange, and a third line, but that third line would not be built due to technical limitations of the time. Alongside that, it was replaced with the yellow line. The green line would run east to west, the orange line would run north to south, and the third line originally would have ran directly underneath Montreal. However, the third line proposed would be eliminated in favor of an entirely new line that would become the yellow line. The yellow line ran underneath the St. Lawrence River to service the site of the 1967 World's Fair, where the iconic biosphere would be held. This blueprint got approved and construction was finally allowed to begin, and in May of 1962, ground was broken at Berry Street to begin boring the tunnels. While the tunnels were being bored, the city of Montreal searched for a manufacturer to build the rolling stock that would be used on the metro. A contract to build 369 of the MR63 cars was awarded to the Canadian Victors Company in 1963. After the initial prototyping phase was finished, mass production of the MR63s began, and the first MR63 cars were delivered on August 24, 1965, and began testing on the portions of the line that were completed but not yet opened. The MR63's exterior body was constructed out of a lightweight steel alloy. These cars are around 17 meters long or 55 feet in length, with a width of 2.5 meters or 8 feet. These cars weighed approximately 16,000 kilograms or 37,000 pounds, and the MR63s can hold around 160 passengers per car, 
and each car has four sets of doors on either side. Each MR63 is equipped with dual traction motors per bogey, which equates to four traction motors per train car. The train intakes electricity via the third rail power system, and each individual traction motor takes around 375 volts direct current electricity to power the motors. Each individual traction motor's power count compares to around 160 horsepower per motor. Adding all four traction motors together, each car has around 640 horsepower overall. And the maximum design speed of the MR63 is around 71 kilometers per hour or 41 miles per hour. However, passenger services speeds do not exceed 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour. After about four years of construction, the Montreal Metro was ready to be opened. On October 12, 1966, the first 20 stations were inaugurated with the mayor and cardinal both in attendance. The Metro was such a massive success that it served over 1 million people in its first weekend of operation. Overall, the introduction of the Metro was an incredible success. However, the city was not done yet. They wanted to expand it. But before we continue, I want to include a few important events that occurred between the time that the Metro initially opened to the time that the extensions were built. In 1971, a fire broke out in the tail turnover tracks of Henry Borissa Station. Another fire occurred between Laurier and Resonance stations. These two fires led to safety improvements over the entire line. In that same year, Bombardier won the contract to build the MR-73s, or the second set of rolling stock that the STM ordered. 423 cars of the MR-73s were built throughout the following years and were delivered in 1976. The MR-73s look almost identical to that of the MR-63s. The one main difference is that the headlights are different on the 73s. Instead of the headlights and taillights being vertical like they are on the 63s, they were switched to being horizontal on the 73s. Other improvements for the MR-73s were a brand new interior design for the motorman's cab and as well as the passenger cab. The traction motor and propulsion system was completely overhauled along with the electrical system. And after about five years of the metro initially opening, the city was ready to expand it, and on October 14, 1971, planning began to extend the green and orange lines. The green line would be extended to Henri Bougrand Street and Agrignon Park, and the orange line would be extended to Place St. Henri on the south side. Alongside these, a fifth line was also planned that would become the blue line. The construction of these extensions would begin with the Green Line being extended to Agrignon Terminal Station in 1978, and by 1986 the Orange Line was extended to its current terminal station on the south end of the line, Côté Vertu. The Blue Line was opened in 1986 from the terminal station of St. Michael and ended at the Park Station while the rest of the line was being built, and by 1988 the Blue Line was completed and began full revenue service across all of the stations. And since the 1980s, the metro system remained unchanged until around the early 1990s. In 1991, the STM performed a rehab program to 336 of the MR63 train cars. Beginning in 1991, every car was renovated from bogey to passenger cab. In 1993, Barry Street was renamed to Barry Ucom and was reopened as a multi-service superstation connecting the green, orange, and the yellow lines all underground from one station. And in 2005, the MR-73s had their interior renovated and the roll signs replaced with LED electronic signs. And in 2007, the final extension would happen on the Orange Line. The Orange Line would be extended to its current Northside Station Terminal of Montmorency. And the three stations that were constructed for this extension opened on April 26, 2007. And finally, in 2010, the STM awarded Bombardier and Alstom to build their newest fleet, the MPM-10s. The MPM-10s were a massive departure from the MR-63s and 73s. The train cars featured a complete exterior and interior body redesign. The trains featured an open gangway design on the interior, which allows for passengers to freely move in between trains without having to exit the car at a station. The automatic train control system was completely upgraded and modernized with more fail-safe features integrated into the system. They also featured brand new automated passenger announcements. Station en Grignon. Terminus. N'oubliez pas vos effets personnels. Merci d'avoir voyagé avec la STM. 
and LCD panels displaying what the next stop is, along with the distance between each stop. The fleet was built between 2011 all the way through 2021, and by the time enough of the MPM-10s were delivered, the STM was ready to retire all of the MR63 cars. And as a celebration, the STM decided to hold a farewell trip for the MR63s, running a 9-car set of the MR63s on all four lines over a period of four days. Once the farewell trip had concluded, the MR63s were all scrapped, however two of them were donated to the Canadian Railway Museum to be preserved. And as of today, the MR63s are the longest running subway rolling stock in all of North America, running in service for 52 years, from 1966 all the way to 2018. Before I end off this, I want to give some of my final thoughts on the STM as a whole and the cultural impact it has. In my honest opinion, the metro system is very fast and efficient and gets the job done very well. I noticed that the wait times in between train cars is not astronomically high. Over the course of being in Montreal for five weeks, I've made some observations surrounding the wait times in between trains. The average wait times during a weekday is around four to five minutes and that's usually during rush hour. And when it's not rush hour, the wait time is usually five to seven minutes. And on the weekends, the wait time is usually six to eight minutes in between trains. Although earlier in the day, it ranges from eight to 10 minutes. And as someone coming from Boston, I can say with full confidence that the service is a lot better here. Trains arrive a lot more frequently and the flow of passengers is very efficient. The average wait time is very short, which is very nice and I can't really say that about the Boston Transit System or the MBTA. Back home waiting for a train on the red or orange lines, which are the two most popular heavy rail rapid transit lines in all of Boston, wait times during rush hour usually average from 5 to 8 minutes, and during off hours wait time usually stands from 10 to 14 minutes, which is a massive difference compared to the Montreal Metro. I've also observed that the Montreal Metro really does take care of their equipment. The MR63s were able to last 52 years in service, which is incredible if you think about it. Back home in Boston, the old Orange Line fleet, the 1200 series that is getting replaced currently, was built in between 1979 and 1981. And those cars are around 41-ish years old. And those cars are in absolutely horrible condition. Look at how bad the rusting is on this. Like this is like, that looks burnt not rusted. That just looks straight up burnt. Look at the corrosion on this. That's so bad. The body is corroding away and the mechanical and propulsion systems are suffering from frequent breakdowns and mechanical problems causing standbys and disabled trains almost on the daily. And the MBTA has lacked proper care and maintenance of those cars within the past decade which has seriously contributed to their rapid deterioration. But looking at how the STM has taken care of their system and the rolling stock, it shows that if you put the time and effort into taking proper care of the equipment, it can last a really long time. In terms of how the STM lines operate and where the stations are located, the stations are not too far apart from each other. The walking distance in between two stations is not too far. However, one thing I will say is that having all those stations underground is kind of depressing at times. Back home in Boston, there are several portions where our subways roll along the surface and it's very refreshing to see natural sunlight and to see the landscape scrolling by as you're traveling from station to station. Even though the entire STM system is underground, I do see the benefits of keeping it underground. For one, keeping it underground means that you don't have to worry about the infrastructure being affected by weather conditions or having any delays because of like heavy snow or like ice and whatnot. In terms of the actual rolling stock, I personally like riding the old MR73s that are on the blue and yellow lines, and a few of them sprinkled on the green lines. The, those cars closely resemble standard subway cars, with individual cars being coupled together, 
and pulled by one lead motor car. It reminds me the most of home and I really do like that. However, I do think the MPM10s are really cool and they look slick, but in my mind, I personally see them as being glorified snakes with rubber wheels. That's just my opinion. However, that's not to say that they are bad. They definitely seemed like a good upgrade from the MR63s in both functionality and aesthetic design. And this concludes the documentary on the STM. I hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like this, please like, comment, subscribe, dislike it if you dislike it, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye!